Hello and welcome. This is our live event today um, hosted by the United Career Coalition. I will be your host today. My name is Stephanie Playford. Uh, it's top 10 international career tips in 10 minutes. Um, this event is um, hosted by the United Career Coalition, UCC. It's a platform that enables you to connect the network with UN experts. It's, it gives you the opportunity to um, have get insights, advice and tips from those that have applied, interviewed and secured UN system roles. Uh, we aim to help you with your um, applications for intergovernmental organizations as well as your interview preparation. Um, yeah, this is a little bit about um, UCC and um, as I said, I will be, be your host um, today. Thank you for joining everyone and um, let's start. Um, 10 key tips to take away. First tip, find your why. Why do you want an international career? Is it because you love to travel? Is it because you want to live in different parts of the world? Um, maybe it is because you want to serve the public or you want to have a bigger impact in the world. Um, I think this is really for you to find out, but I think it's important to ask yourself that question before you start an international career with an intergovernmental organization. This really goes hand in hand with the second advice. Um, find a subject you have a drive for. Getting one's foot in an intergovernmental organization such as the United Nations or an interna international financial institution, um, maybe the World Bank or an African Development Bank, is not an easy task. And as some of you may have experienced, the application process and the interview process is rather complex and very competitive. There is really, from what I learned, no golden rule and certainly no guarantee that if you study a certain degree or go on a field mission that you actually get a job at the UN. The UN is, is like a huge company with, with various departments from finance, HR, procurement to a legal department and even a medical department. So there are various suitable roles that could potentially match your favorite field of study. So my second tip is to really find something, a course, a field of study that you enjoy. Um, find something you are naturally good at. This, in my opinion, will automatically give you an advantage in the application process and it will also keep you motivated because, as I said, the process can sometimes be quite cumbersome and um, it's not, not a very quick process to get a job with an inter intergovernmental organization. So, in my opinion, it's really important to have that um, motivation. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's important in general in life and for a career to be passionate about what you do and to find something you enjoy. So in short, um, the key tip number two is find a subject you have a drive for. The tip number three is like most companies have a business strategy, our advice is to have your own personal career strategy. Set yourself realistic goals and ideas of how you can achieve them. Um, you could, for example, create an Excel sheet where you can list your goals and see who could potentially help you. Um, what skills maybe would you need in addition to the skills you already have? What skills would you need to develop in order to reach those goals? And last but not least, it's really important also to network and network and connect. Um, effective ne networking is key. And I would say thanks to modern technology, it's possible to do remotely, for example, via social media platforms like, like LinkedIn, like we do today. This will bring me to the next tip, um, tip number four. The UN is not one um, big employer. So the United Nations is a complex organization and it's um, comprised of the main organs, specialized agencies, programs, funds, research and training institutes and a variety of related bodies. Um, consequently, there are many organizations as well as financial institution, interest groups around the world where you can apply for. So my next tip is 
don't just focus on the, so to say, um, big beasts. Don't just focus on the headquarters. Um, don't just try to get a job in New York at the UN or UNICEF or the World Bank. You will actually be surprised that some people, some people in the UN don't even, are not even familiar with smaller agencies such as um, the International Civil Avi Aviation Organization or the IMO, the International Maritime Organization. So there are very smaller organizations that um, it might be easier um, to, to get in and um, to find a suitable role there. And then that gives you an opportunity to, ne to network from within and also the opportunity to, of course, then um, gain some experience working for the UN. Tip number five, find a way to get your foot into the UN system. So there are various ways to get um, into the system and to kickstart your global career. I would say, um, depending on your status, so to say, um, there are various entry levels. What do I mean with status? So for example, for um, a graduate school student, um, a recent graduate or a professional with experience. So this is what I mean with, with different status, so to say. So let's say um, the typical opportunity with landing a global job for the first category that I just mentioned, so a graduate school student, um, would be, um, for example, for an internship. Um, the UN and also, for example, the World Bank, they offer various paid internships, um, full or part-time, from one month to six months, um, or even a longer period. So this might be a good opportunity to um, get in, get a UN experience, but also again to network from within. This already brings me to my next tip, tip number six: um, write a new, fresh cover letter for each vacancy. Gaining a job um, at an internet governmental organization, as you might know, isn't like most professions and requires some thought around how to build your experience and skills um, that you, um, to, to your desired role, to a vacancy. And it's important um, to understand how to prepare for the sometimes um, rather complex and time consuming interview process. So keep in mind you're competing against the world. Intergovernmental organizations receive up to 800 applications per vacant role. So there is really no standard template. Understanding what, what's key for the very specific role that you apply for and tailor your application documents towards those responsibilities and skills that are needed for that specific role. It's important that you show HR and the hiring manager that you understand the role, that you understand and showcase why you are a perfect fit, not only for the UN, but for that very specific role. So my advice is here really try to match your skills to the not only the organizational values and competencies, which is very important, but also express your motivation and adherence to those values and beliefs and showcase your understanding of the organization's work and purpose Purpose, but also of your understanding of the very specific role that you apply for. This brings me to my next tip, um, tip number seven, don't be shy. So um, it's, it's hardly ever possible, in my opinion, to find a role in private sector or public sector where you match 100% of all the key tasks expected. Um, this does not mean, of course, that my advice is that you know you apply for roles when you don't fulfill the criteria. Um, there are, of course, certain, so to say, knockout questions, even if they're not called knockout questions, but um, questions, for example, um, when it comes to language or a certain degree. Of course, if you if the role requires you to speak French and you cannot speak French, that of course um, then is is um, not not a role that is maybe suitable for you. Um, but what I mean with don't be shy and don't try to match all the key tasks required is even if you only match 80% of the vacancy, um, I would still recommend as long as you fulfill those, um, so to say, um, yeah, knockout questions or these hard factors like language, degree and years of experience and so on, I would still recommend that you're not shy, you give it a go and you apply for the role. This will bring me to um, tip number eight. Don't ignore your transferable skills. Both skills and competencies are needed so you can demonstrate to HR and the hiring manager not only what you have acquired through your studies and training and experience and your work experience, but how you have acquired it. 
My advice is to reflect um, some of your soft and transferable skills that relate to how you work and how you interact with colleagues and, for example, how you solve problems. I personally um, always like to showcase my good time management skills and my multicultural team working skills. The UN is one big family. You work with a lot of different cultures, with a lot of um, and different, um, yeah, different nationalities. So that is something which I think is quite important working for the UN. Um, so I always highlight that. All these skills are transferable skills. Other transferable skills, for example, that you could highlight are presentation skills, your ability to work under pressure, and the good news is that um, you already have all those transferable skills, that you've developed those skills in your life, at school, at university, at home. So you just need to showcase them. This brings me to tip number nine, always stay professional, both when interacting with intergovernmental organization staff in person or when reaching out to them in writing. When you try to network and connect for LinkedIn, for example, stay professional, don't over ask. Um, try to avoid using too much emotional language, especially when you write um, your um, cover letter. Keep your message short and concise and make sure um, you also check them for, for grammar and spelling mistakes. That would be, would be my advice as well. And last but not least, um, the tip number 10, our last tip today, um, keep up to date. Um, what are the latest trends? What are the latest initiatives, global initiatives, such as the sustainable development goals um, and other developments? Um, try to keep on learning and developing new skills that could be suitable for international career roles. Um, before I end this uh, live uh, session today, just a quick overview of the United Career Coalition services. We have an application guide, a cover letter guide with uh, a sample cover letter for specifically for UN roles, as well as an interview guide with um, interview preparation advice, as well as specific competency-based interview questions and samples, sample answers, as well as for you the opportunity to get a 45-minute um, session with a UN expert to ask any question you may have. So that would be a 45 minute uh, video call advice where you can ask um, your international career related questions or get help with your cover letter. Um, we also review and um, edit um, application documents. So if that is something which is, um, which is of use to you or which could be useful, then please feel free to reach out. Um, head to our website, unitedcareercoalition.org, or drop me an email, info at unitedcareercoalition.org. And um, there are other ways you can stay up to date. Um, you, can, you can, of course, follow us on LinkedIn, um, and you can join also or join our LinkedIn United Career Coalition group, um, or sign up to our YouTube channel, or as I said, just visit our website and uh, feel free to drop me an email. Feel free to drop me a message on LinkedIn if you have any questions. I appreciate this is um, a very short event, only 10 minutes. I really hope though these tips were useful and I hope I hear from you and um, wish you all the best for your international career ambitions and uh, hope um, that some of these tips might help you succeed and hope that uh, maybe one day um, you get the opportunity to kickstart your intergovernmental career in 2023 and all the best for you and happy new year to everyone.